Hello and welcome to this special bonus video showing you how to modify your Space Invaders game so that you can control your spaceship using a BBC microbit. Now to follow the steps in this video you are going to need to be using a Windows or Mac computer with Bluetooth. Sadly the steps don't currently work on Chromebooks though that will hopefully change soon once the Scratch team have worked out how to enable microbit support for Chromebooks. So possibly by the time you're watching this video, um, it will be possible on your Chromebook. Now, in order to connect a microbit to your Scratch game, you need to download and install a small application called Scratch Link. So search the web or go to scratch.mot.edu slash microbit to download the Scratch Link software. Once you've got Scratch Link installed, uh, you'll also need to download the Scratch Microbit hex file, which you'll then want to copy onto your Microbit, and this puts it into a mode that makes it um, work with your Scratch game. You'll know that your Scratch Link hex file is running on your Microbit because it will start showing um, a code of letters on the screen of the Microbit. These letters are used by Scratch Link to help identify your Microbit uh, if there are several nearby, for example if you're doing this at school in a classroom. So once you've got Scratch Link downloaded and running onto your computer and you've put the hex file on your microbit, um, you might now want to make a copy of your Scratch game so that you don't lose all of the work you've done creating a keyboard controlled game. This is just in case something goes wrong. So if you go to File and Save as a Copy and it will make a copy of your game. You'll see it says copy here. And uh, I like to just call this um, Microbit Edition. And you might even want to change your title logo uh, to say that as well. So to actually add the Microbit functionality to our game, uh, we need to go back to the code editor um, and uh, choose your spaceship and down here at the bottom left we're going to click on this button now this is the extensions button for scratch and there are several different extensions you can add but we're interested in the microbit one so click on that and it will start looking for any microbits that are nearby so it's important that you've got your microbit with its hex file running um, powered up so either through a battery pack or maybe it's still connected over USB to your computer but it needs to be up and running in order for scratch to find it once it has, you can just click connect and then go to the editor and that will now be connected to uh, the micro bit that you've got and your micro bit will stop showing that sequence of letters on its screen at this point. So we now get a whole set of micro bit blocks and uh, the ones that we're most interested in are these, this tilted one and uh, the button pressing ones. So what we're going to do for our spaceship is instead of listening out for when the right and left arrow keys are pressed on the keyboard, we're just going to check to see whether um, the microbit is tilted to the left or the right. So you can take uh, those blocks out, so key right arrow, take that out and put tilted and instead of any, say tilted to the right. So if it's tilted to the right and the X position is less than 170, then we're going to set our thrust amount. And we can do the same with a left tilt. Now because we've designed our game really well, this modification is so simple to do. Next we need to change our laser sprite, so click on that and again instead of it being uh, triggered or the laser being triggered when the space key is pressed, we're going to pull that out and we're just going to say when A button is pressed. Now you could leave it as the A button, you could change it to the B button or I prefer just to set it to any button so that players have no, they don't need to decide which button to press, they can just mash away. Finally, we want to go to our game messages and currently, if you remember, it's when space key is pressed, it actually starts the game, if I just show the message, so um, it will ask for us to press the space bar. Uh, that will still work, we can use the space bar, but it'd be nice if we could press the A or the B button. Um, so we can pull all this code off this hat, move that out of the way and replace it with when a button is pressed from the micro bits um, and it's probably a good idea to update the text of our game message uh, to explain that to users as well. So all that you need to do now is click on the green flag to see if this works. So I'm going to press my A button, my game has started and as I tilt my micro bit 
it's moving from left to right and I can press any button to shoot. How cool is that? I've got a motion controlled micro bit game made in scratch and it's taken me barely any time at all to make the modifications because we coded our game really well in the first place. Now you can do even more with a micro bit. For example, you could integrate the screen into it so that um, when the level starts, maybe we could show a little picture of a spaceship on our screen. And we could also show um, maybe an unhappy face if it's game over. Or we could show something when an alien has been hit. So that's it for this series. As I said at the end of the previous video, I really hope that you've enjoyed making your Space Invaders game and particularly adding microbit control to your game. I'd love to see what projects you come up with using these skills. So feel free to share your projects and add links in the comments for this video. Good luck and enjoy your coding.